Yes lads, how's it going? Max here and today welcome back to another Premier League video where we look forward to this weekend's football from the Premier League. Hence the title of the video. So I'm going to go through the whole weekend's fixtures and just give you my opinions, tell you my favourite player from each team, who I think is going to score, who might, who might impress and give you my prediction on what the result might be. Leave me your thoughts down below of what you think the result is going to be from that particular game I'm talking about. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's jump into it. Like I was saying in my previous video, it dragged on. So thank you if you did watch to that, that to the very end. I do appreciate it. It was like 18 minutes long. I promise you this one will not be that long. I'll try and talk about each team for about 45 seconds and um, we'll try and balance it out. I mean, my first game is on Friday, which is tomorrow. So I'm recording this on a Thursday. Tomorrow we've got Man United at home to Southampton, which is Ibrahimovic's first home game for United. Now, I think you'll get on the score sheet. I think both teams will score. Southampton, they seem to be one of these teams every year that seem to lose their lose players, and they seem to still end up doing well. I really do like Southampton. I know Spurs have taken a few players from him. I'm dragging on already. I'm going to give you a result of 2-1. Ibrahimovic and Rooney. For Southampton, they'll probably be playing on the counter-attack because that's what United do when they're at home. They keep the ball, they keep possession. I'm going to go for Shane Long. Got him, got him in my fantasy team as well. Now on to our first game in the Premier League on Saturday afternoon at half 12, Stoke entertain City. Now City have just come off the back of that tremendous result. Five goals they smashed past was it Stel Bucharest? I believe it was. Don't fault me on that. Don't, don't judge me. They smashed a load of goals. Aguero got a hat trick and he conceded. No, he didn't. And he missed two penalties. What a guy that is. I mean, they, they outclassed them. They're obviously through to the next round. Fair play to City. So they haven't had much rest. And Stoke, they're never an easy place to go. They're never an easy place to go. I honestly think Stoke, and, Stoke are going to get at least a point out of this game. Stoke are going to get properly stuck in. This, I think it's live on telly. It's at half 12. Stoke coming off the back of that one all draw away at the Riverside at Middlesbrough. You've got Juve, Shakiri, Anatovic, Crouch to come on, Walters comes on. He just seems to be a nuisance. He gets stuck in. They're going to end up causing problems for City because City have got a lot of small players. They've got a lot of brilliantly technical players, but Stoke are going to get stuck in there. I'm going to go for a one all in that game. Aaron Artovich, and then I'm going to say Aguero because he just seems to keep scoring at the moment. Oh, my voice there. My voice went there. Bloody hell. Burnley entertain Liverpool at Turf Moor. Now, they're coming off the back of a 1-0 defeat to Swansea. Now, that's that was at home as well. So, they'll be looking to rectify that. Go, go at Liverpool. Give them a proper good go. Liverpool, on the other hand, are coming off of a 4-3 victory at the Emirates. Fair play. I was buzzing about that. There was a lot of goals. Some great goals as well, which I spoke about in the last video. Liverpool going all out attack again. I mean, they're just incredible going forward. They've got Mane, Coutinho... What well, storage is going to come back? They got Firmino. Like they're all gifted, talented players. I feel they're just a bit weak at the back, so that could be where Burnley pounce. But Liverpool are going to win that one. I'm going to go with a three-one victory for Liverpool. I can see Coutinho getting a couple of goals and Mane getting the other one. Burnley, on the other hand, Burnley can cause problems with Graham Vokes up front, but Liverpool is going to be too strong for them, and I can see them walking away with a comfortable victory. Andre Gray getting on the score sheet though. Now this fixture does sound like one of the boring ones to me, but it's Swansea against Hull. Now you've got Swansea coming away from that brilliant victory at Burnley. They got that last, well not last minute, but late goal from Leroy Fur to make it 1-0. And they took the victory, took all three points. They're entertaining Hull, who have just come off the back of beating Leicester, the champions, on the first day of the season. God, I'm actually quite good at this. I'm getting quite, it's quite fun, you know. They come off the back beating the champions 2-1 from an overhead kick. And it was Snodgrass, wasn't it? Who tapped the ball. They didn't tap the ball home. It was a, actually a rocket into the bottom right-hand corner. Brilliant. That's going to be a good game. I can see some goals. Maybe not as hyped up as the other games, but it's going to be. there's definitely going to be goals in that one. Being a Spurs fan, I always like to see Sigerson do well. So I'd like to see Sigerson maybe score. And I can see Abel Hernandez scoring. I'm going to go for another draw in that game. Before I move on to the next game, remember, if I, if you honestly think I'm talking rubbish, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. Like I said before, I like to give my view. I want to talk about football. I like to give. I like to just to talk about people scoring goals in general. So yeah, let's move on to the next game. Moving on to the next game, we've got Spurs welcoming Crystal Palace at White Hart Lane. Obviously, my home team. If you watch me frequently, I'm just going. I'm not going. I'm going to have to try and enjoy this game from my own home. That's the only downfall. But I can see Spurs properly going out. And we've got Lamella, who's on form. Obviously, scored the header against Everton. Harry Kane will be wanting to get on the score sheet at home. First game of the season at White Hart Lane. And with Palace, on the other hand, losing their opening day of the season game to West Brom, they're going to be wanting to get a result, surely. But they've lost Belassi. So, I honestly think Spurs should, I say should, walk away with a comfortable victory. 
So with Lamella getting on the score sheet and Kane, I'm going to go for a 3-0. I'm going for it, 3-0. There's no reason why that couldn't happen. The only downfall, obviously, Lloris is out for four weeks, so we've got Vorm in goal. Now, he's still a good keeper. He's not my first choice, though. Chelsea travelled to Watford after beating West Ham on their opening day of the season. Obviously, Diego Costa still on the pitch, which I'm still annoyed about. Chelsea fans obviously don't rip me for that. In the end, they were lucky to walk away with a 2-1 victory over West Ham. So they're going to Watford Vicarage Road, who are going to be trying to get their first win of the season because they drew one all away at Southampton. It was Capu that scored early on for Watford, and obviously Redmond equalised. So Watford will be wanting to maybe cause a bit of an upset, whether that's seen as an upset, because Chelsea are probably going to be favourites to win that game. I think Chelsea will be winning that game. They've obviously got Hazard, who looked good against West Ham. He'll probably end up getting on the score sheet. I'm going to go for a 2-0. Actually, no, we're going to go 2-1. 2-1 Chelsea. It's hard to call whether it's Igalo or Dini getting on the score sheet, but it should be one of them. Don't really care who scores for Chelsea. They probably will. I'm generally just giving my own opinion. I'm only using Flash Scores app to obviously look at the uh, past results and the lineups that they use, just so I know in my head who they've got playing. But obviously about scores and who's going to score and who I like best, that's just from my own opinion. West Brom welcome Everton to the Hawthorns off the back of that 1-0 victory over Crystal Palace. It was Rondon getting on the score sheet. Now, Rondon is going to be one of those players. He's big. He gets in there. He'll probably end up getting on the score sheet again just because looking at looking at um, West Brom's lineup, I mean, obviously, they've got Berahino, but there's no one in there that stands out as a natural goal scorer. You've got Gardner who can shoot from range, and obviously, if there's a free kick, he's going to be getting in on the action. And obviously Everton will be going there. I don't know if they'll have Lukaku. I don't even know if Balassi's going to be in there in time. But if he is, if they're both there, regardless of what team you put Balassi into, he's always going to cause a threat, in my opinion. You've got Barkley who's going to cause a threat. I can see maybe De La Feo causing problems like he did against Tottenham. He might even grab himself a goal. But West Brom being at home, coming off of the back of that three points, I can see them beating Everton. I'm going to go for a 1-0. Now, I don't really call that very often because I like to see goals. And 1-0... If there's an early goal, you always think, well, that's that prediction gone. But De La Feo, he will cause problems. I'm still going to go with West Brom on this one. Now on to the last Premier League game on the Saturday. It's half five kickoff. It should be on telly. It's Leicester against Arsenal. Obviously, both teams coming off the back of a loss. Leicester at home. Mardi's just... Mardi? Mahrez has just signed a new deal, so he'll be, obviously, all the fans will be buzzing about that. I feel like he could be that guy that runs the show. He's just signed a new deal, like I said. The fans will be behind him. The fans will be behind the team. They'll want to see a victory. They've obviously probably had the, the ceremony for being champions last season because it's the first home game for them. Arsenal, on the other hand, they need to sort it out. They need to go all guns blazing. They need to literally... Giroud needs to start for them. He needs to. Wasn't he their top goal scorer last season? I don't know why he didn't play against Liverpool... I probably should know, but because obviously I'm not an Arsenal fan, I don't really care. If Giroud's on the pitch, and I'm sure he will be, then I'm sure they'll score goals. I mean, as, as funny as that might sound, he'll end up scoring. Who will end up scoring? Always does, and it pisses me off. So that's another game that should have goals. Obviously, Vardy, that end, Giroud, that end, Walcott, he's got a lot of pace. Chamberlain, oh, sorry about, sorry to hear. That is the worst thing, obviously, about Arsenal. Chamberlain, isn't he injured? Genuinely gutted about that, him being English and all that. But there should be goals. Tough one to call. I reckon Leicester are going to take this one. I'm not going to give a score because I genuinely don't know, but I'm, I, I'm going to side with Leicester. Two games on the Sunday. You've got Sunderland against Middlesbrough being one of the two games. And now Sunderland, you've got Jermaine Defoe. He seems to always score. He's against Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough have got Negredo who scored in his debut as well. That's going to be another tough game. Sunderland lost to City. Middlesbrough, who did they play? They drew one all with Stoke. Now Middlesbrough... It's going to be a tough season for them. That Negredo signing is honestly brilliant. Cannot fault that signing. He's got Champions League in him. He can score goals. He knows where the goal is. He's tall. He can win headers. Fair play. If they get the ball whipped into him, anything, anything is possible. Sunderland are at home. They'll want a victory. They've got Defoe. They've even got Cabal at the back. He started against City. Now, <laughs> Cabal's very mixed. I have very mixed opinions on him. He has sometimes the most solid game. I can't remember where I just left off because my camera just ran out of battery, so sorry about that. I was probably waffling about Defoe getting on the score sheet. He might do. I was probably waffling about Negredo as well. That's a tough game to call. I'd like to say a draw, but it's one of those games that can go either way. Just like any game can go either way. I don't know why I say that. I also forgot to mention Sunderland against Middlesbrough on Sunday is the half one kickoff, and West Ham and Bournemouth being the second game is a four o'clock kickoff. So that'll be live on telly as well. I'm sure it'll be part of a Super Sunday. West Bram. West Bram. Sorry, West Ham fans. 
West Ham say hello to Bournemouth, who are obviously coming... What was Bournemouth's last game? Who are coming off the back of that 3-1 loss to Man United at home, and now they're travelling all the way down to London to play West Ham. It won't be an easy test for Bournemouth, not at all. West Ham obviously come off the back of that defeat to Chelsea, but like I said, they could have easily got a point at Stamford Bridge. I think they bottled it in the last few minutes. If they just kept the ball, kept the pressure, anything was possible. I can't see West Ham not starting Pyatt in this, this game. I mean, as soon as Pyatt was brought on against Chelsea, the game changed. It led to that corner and they ended up getting the goal. So, I, they'll end up playing Pyatt. They'll end up scoring. There's a few goals in that game for West Ham. West Ham winning that game comfortably for me. Bournemouth do have some exciting players, obviously. They've got Wilson, Ivan King that started up front as a free against Man United. Now, whether that will be the same formation against West Ham, probably not because they're not at home. I can see them playing a little bit more defensively, but they're another team that will try and get on the counter and break and obviously try and score that way. So I said West Ham might be winning that game comfortably, but I've got a bone to pick with West Ham. And obviously it's not West Ham fans. Why is Antonio playing right back? He's a right winger. He's a right mid. No further back than that halfway line. He's not a right back. Now, West Ham fans must have been crying about that like literally not in a bad way i don't blame you that it pisses me off watching that so if that happens he's just not cut out to be there right that little rant over anyway west ham will win that comfortably carol will have a ball whipped in from pyatt probably or pyatt sorry about the spit pyatt will probably score a free kick out of nowhere and that'll be that everyone will be buzzing about it best free kick taker in the league blah -de blah which i've got nothing against i love the guy I just just hate the way he plays for west ham so that is that. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode of the Premier League preview. Like I said, I want to do this weekly or monthly or however much you guys want to see it. Obviously, whenever there's a lot of games on, I'm just going to talk about them like this nice and quick. Get your points, get your predictions for the games, and we'll leave it at that. We'll go from there. We'll see who's wrong, see who's right. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.